lawyer collects $18 million in fees and then sues his own client for another $5.5 million. So a Long Island man who was awarded a historic multi-million dollar verdict after fracturing his school years ago is now ducking it out with his former lawyer over $5.5 million because the attorney's greed knows no bounds, new court papers allege. Mark Perez was sued last month by his ex-attorney Benedict Morelli, who claims he's entitled to the $5.5 million in legal fees on top of the more than $18 million Perez has already paid him, according to filings in Manhattan Supreme Court. I think that lawyers should be paid well for their work. A person like me needs them to fight for them, but for Mr. Morelli to take away so much of the settlement, it just seems wrong. Perez recently wrote to the judge that oversaw his personal injury trial. Perez, 38, originally received a $102 million jury verdict in 2019 after suing Live Nation over a fall six years earlier that left him with a broken skull and needing multiple brain surgeries. A forklift had crashed into a 10-foot-tall booth Perez was working on, setting him plummeting at the Jones Beach Marine Theater. Perez and Morelli originally agreed that the notable personal injury attorney would get one-third of the award as the contingency fee, but when the verdict went to appeal, Morelli repeatedly tried to negotiate an additional 10% fee, while Perez sought to pay the lawyer an hourly rate, according to Perez, counterclaims to the suit Morelli filed against him last month. So Morelli kept working the case, despite Perez allegedly never signing an agreement over the additional fee, and eventually secured his client a $55 million settlement with Live Nation's insurers outside of the appeal court. In the end, Perez only received $28 million from the settlement. The $5.5 million is being held in an escrow account while Perez fights for its return, in addition to all the fees he paid Morelli. So Morelli continues to insist that he should be paid $5.5 million for the post-trial and appellate work on top of the $18,333,333.30 that Mr. Perez has already paid in legal fees, demonstrating that Morelli's greed knows no bounds, Perez countersuit alleges. In the letter to the judge dated December 9th, Perez added, I am the one that lives with seizures, surgeries, and the constant fear of more medical problems. I hope you are able to help me now by deciding what should be done here. Thank you for hearing my trial. I'm looking forward to moving on and putting this last upsetting situation behind me. Perez also claims Morelli put him in the middle of a fee dispute with his first lawyer, a distant relative causing a rift in his family. And Perez alleges that Morelli didn't inform him about several prior settlement offers post-trial. On Thursday, Morelli asked the judge to toss Perez's counterclaims against him, arguing that he never agreed to Perez's proposed hourly pay rate for the appeal work. Morelli claimed that Perez chose to remain silent about the extra 10% fee until the case had wrapped and the settlement was secured. Mr. Perez accepted the benefits of the firm's work with respect to the appeal, did not terminate the firm, and did not ask the firm to stop working on the matter. Morelli's lawyers wrote in Thursday following, he chose to remain silent while the firm completed the appeal and thereby ratified the 10% fee agreement. The aftermath of Perez's fall on June 26, 2013, left him needing full-time care and caused him to lose his long-term relationship, and Morelli told the Post soon after the verdict, lawyers on both sides declined to comment. And... This is kind of like a really sad and scary situation, right? I'm not going to talk necessarily about like the whole like legal relationship, right? Because that's pretty complicated. But when you really take into consideration that Perez only received roughly... Yeah, so Perez only received roughly $28 million from the actual settlement, 
and it was originally $55 million for the actual settlement. That is uh, a bit sad, right? Because when you factor that in, right, while also how much he ended up having to pay his lawyer, he doesn't really have much money in terms of like what he actually got from the whole thing, which is sad to see, right? Now, he still has a good amount of money for anyone, right? In terms of like just financially speaking, it's still enough money to like live a really good life, right? For the money that he actually ends up having at the end of the day. That being said, this is the problem in terms of like legal battles. This is also one of the same reasons why, like for example, divorce is extremely expensive. Like divorce necessarily isn't nece- divorce isn't necessarily expensive in terms of what you're having to give to the other person. It's actually like the legal fees. Right, It's how much you're actually paying the lawyers to actually deal with the whole situation. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of people do not like dealing with lawyers because they tend to know that it's going to be very costly anytime lawyers get involved in a situation. Now, some lawyers will end up making it a much better situation regardless of how much they cost. It just depends on the specific situation. So if I was the individual, right, that got the settlement, I would go through the legitimate process of potentially, you know, bringing up a case to the judge and seeing what the judge says about the whole situation because the judge also saw over the whole personal injury itself case, right? But it's going to be hard because what really this individual needs to do is regardless of what money he ends up truly having after everything's said and done, after all this mess is said and done, he needs to be able to manage that money well enough to where he's not going to be forced to go like work a day job, right? Because the reality of the situation with his skull being fractured him having seizures, he's not going to be able to really work really any job, right? Like he's kind of like in a bad situation that really the only options available to him if he did not have this money would be like disability, right? And that's like for the majority of people on disability, that's not a good living. So regardless of the amount of money that he actually gets from everything said and done, he needs to be able to manage it in a way to where he could live off of it for the rest of his life. And that's the reality of the situation. Regardless of his whole legal process, he needs to be able to manage his money correctly after everything is said and done to be able to live off of that. So that means having no debt. That means having a pretty hefty emergency fund because of his specific situation. And that also means that a lot of his money is going to have to be in investments that give him like a cash amount of money basically every single month, right? That he can live off of. And that's the main thing. Like he needs to be able to live off of the money and live a good life, right? Not just in livable life, a good life, a great life. That's what he needs to do. And it's going to be pretty difficult, but that's the reality of this guy's situation. If you want to learn how to get a debt and manage your money, go to 40 